Hello, my name is Cindy, and as you will see in the little box about the author, you'll read a little bit about some of my background and uh, what I've been up to the last ooh, 30 years. It's hard to believe, but um, at any rate, my studies in different realms of spirituality, and I came to Empower Network and um, as an opportunity uh, to explore one. It just captured my attention to say, what are these people about? And they're so excited, and they're so uh, definite about what they're about and that attracted me and I came in and I thought well these people <laughs> they've got more energy than I have it must be a young person program and as I followed on and stayed with it I noticed no even some people in their 50s and 60s and 70s and maybe even older people um, from different generations it's an intergenerational platform and as I've stayed with this and learned how to listen and learned how to follow the steps that they prescribe for the success that I'm looking for. So I've learned how to do that. I have found it to be, as Justin uh, V talks about, it is a platform for transformation. As I'm becoming more and more aware of that, this has captured my heart as a, as a minister and as a chaplain. Although I no longer serve in a hospital setting as a chaplain, I still have that chaplain heart. And what I've noticed through this process of listening to the videos, listening to the live uh, hangouts and to the live teleconferences, is that these people in this platform of Empower Network, they desire the highest good for people. They desire people to be able to become all that they are. Now, this is something that no one can give us. No one can give me all that I am. And I can't make you become all that you have the potential to be. We all have to do our own work. In the Christian um, uh, sense, it's called work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, there's, <laughs> I don't want to get into preaching, but it's, it's, it's already here for us. You know, all we have to do, the working it out is teasing out the things that get in our way of being who we truly are. And this process, going through these steps, these eight core commitments that Empower Network um, sets out for us, going through that process, recognizing where we fail to go through the process, what's that about, how do we get clean and clear around that so that we can go towards our goal and for, for our true transformation into becoming who we really are, letting go of false beliefs, letting go of negativity, uh, blockages that that really are preventing us and we become more awake to what they are and then we release them and what I find is many people do this journey by themselves uh, anyhow I mean because we're all growing and desiring to grow some people do it slowly through their family or through life circumstances that force them to do this uh, when drastic change comes you know, we're forced to, uh, to have a different paradigm or to try to force our paradigm over and then we suffer in pain uh, because it doesn't fit any longer. Or we may go to a therapist and some people do that because they, they feel this angst and this struggle and they know something's wrong so they look for a one-on-one -on -one person to help them. It's perfectly legitimate. And then some people, you know, they know there's something more, they're suffering, they don't feel like they have therapeutic needs so they call on a coach, a life coach or a business coach, whatever area. And that's perfect, you know, for them at that time. I mean, I use coaches in my life now, even though I'm with Empower Network. I use all the resources and support that I can get that's helping me refine who I am. Now, the question is, what's it all about? Why do I want to refine who I am? And that's a process of even discovering why that I want to do that. I'm going to share that. Yeah, I'm going to share it in this video, okay? I contemplated just for a moment sharing it in another video. My why. I grew up in a Christian traditional home. I don't know if there's a Christian traditional home, but I grew, grew up in a home whose tradition was Christianity, whose religion was Christianity. The spirituality, eh, it was a work in progress, okay? Progress, process. And um, it has some positive tenets and it had some negative aspects to it, in my opinion. But even the negative, again, taught me. It taught me uh, and helped make me and helped remake me. 
Okay, I won't go into all that. <laughs> Sorry, I see pictures and images in my head, and I'm, I'm not always communicating them very clearly. But I'm working on that. I'm a work in prog process, progress. Work in progress. Yeah, that's it, progress. And I'm making progress. Um, so at any rate, so <laughs> let me just pause here for a second. I'll take a drink of water. I didn't know I was going to do this part, but I'm open. Uh, through my journey and through that, that tradition and the religiosity, I actually, the, the rebel archetype became very much alive in me. And the rebel is the one who says, no, this isn't for me. And I fought it. And of course, I was a child, and there's only so much you can do as a child in a household. And so what I did was I found other avenues to... Uh, to try to relieve myself from the pain of, of what didn't feel right for me. There wasn't a lot of openness of discussion. Um, it was a time in a, in a culture where what your parents say or is it. Well, I don't want to get into all this, <laughs> all that part anyhow. At any rate, so I rebelled oh, against what didn't feel right to me, against what went against my spirit. And that was some of it, and some of it was just my own pleasure-seeking. And I became uh, active in the the subculture of substances, uh, chemical substances, and used chemicals for a little over three years, and pretty heavily for three years, and then periodically for a couple years after that. So why do I share that? Because we am going to say periodically after a few years, for a few years in between from that time frame of the end of the three years to just a few times thereafter, a major transition happened in my life. And I'll go I will go in through that in another tape or another session here video. What I want to say now is what I realized is is a much, much deeper meaning in life, a d much, much deeper relationship with all that is in nature, with what, what I call God, um, who I call God. Um, it was out of my control. It sort of entered my life, and I was overwhelmed in a positive way, in a very positive way that let me know that there's something more as I started getting my life together, cleaning up my life, getting more clear, when I say cleaning up, it's like, uh, it wasn't like I was bad or wrong. I didn't have judgments in what I was doing, but it, was, it wasn't working for me any longer. And that was, that was the crisis. It was no longer working for me. And that's when this opening happened, and I realized there was something more. So as I got more and more clean, I started realizing that this is something, an opening that a lot of people don't have. And so it became like my heart that people get this opening. And that's what took me into, into, counsel, into counseling and chaplaincy and, and coaching. Um, all these helping professions that I've done and been a part of, what led me there was knowing experientially that there's so much more and wanting to hold that space and, and to help people discover this for themselves. Leaving the chaplaincy was a, it was a time thing. It was time to leave. It was also uh, time for me to explore other parts of my own life, my personal life. Time for me to say, what's next? You might call it a midlife crisis for me. But it really didn't feel like a crisis. It was a midlife shift because with my own faith development, my own spiritual walk, I knew that I was following a path. Even though I didn't know what it was, even though it was a mystery, I trusted that my higher self, my higher good, my divine self, the, my connection with the greater being um, was intact and that that is what was calling me and leading me and drawing me forward. I then found um, I, there were several things I wanted to do after I left chaplaincy. I was like, oh, now I can go volunteer up here. And I would get an internal no. And I was like, oh, 
oh, well, now I can go do this, and I would get an internal no. And this happened for like maybe over a year for months. And it was like months to a year. Actually, I've been on this journey for three years outside of chaplaincy. And what that no, what I now understand that no to be about, no, you don't get to do this. I mean, these were good things that I could do. I could go volunteer at a homeless shelter. I could go volunteer at the soup kitchen. I could get involved with a rehab center as a volunteer and as a coach. And I was so, you know, desiring to give still, but I would get this internal no. And with that, I didn't get that, like something was wrong with me. It was just no. So my mother gave me this, uh, my mother who's very religious, and uh, she gave me this verse from Isaiah. And it said, um, I'll have to find it for later, but it said uh, along the lines of, do you not perceive that I'm doing something new? Uh, to let old things pass away. Don't lean on the old. It's something new is happening. It's like life is being created in the desert. And so what I was trying to do earlier was trying to take the skills and gifts that I have and apply them somewhat in the same way uh, that I had as a chaplain and just in different different venues, which is exciting because it's different people and, and I just love people and I love seeing people grow and and so that's my why because I love people uh, it's taken me this long to get there for you but that's my why is because I love life I love people uh, I love nature I love community I love harmony these are things that that bring me to life and expand my life is being in in community relationship and harmony and 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 sharing you know, sharing so that um, more people can experience that. It's, uh, it's just wonderful. And what I find with Empower Network is that it's a venue to help people get into a community that helps each other do this. Now, we still all, as I said earlier, we all have to do our own work. And in one sense, we have to do it alone because it's ours. And in another sense, we don't have to do it alone in that we have support, we have love, we have, um, we have a, a process that helps raise issues. One of the things that I'm not sure is in Empower Network is what to do when these issues come up. They sort of leave, um, leave us to our own devices, if you will, uh, on how to deal with these blockages. In the one sense, um, it reminds me of a of a mentor that I had <coughs> in another situation. Excuse me, in another situation, he said, you know, "Get over it." You know, if um, you got issues, get over them. And you know, okay, but there's some techniques that can be used and incorporated to get over them. Now, actually, I will have to say that Dave Wood does incorporate neurolinguistic programming in this, and so in a sense, they are offering indirectly. Um, some clearing processes or some awakening processes. And then there's some others who are, who are also contributing different things. My hope and my desire and my... No, 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 no. Let me do this right now. Take out hope and take out really even desire. Uh, my intention is to, to be present, is to offer, to give, even as I'm learning what this platform is about, and to give and to support and to do some clearing, definitely do clearing, incorporate Ho'oponopono, which is something I'll talk about in another video or another blog, but to incorporate these things because what I really want to do is share with you my vision um, or a couple of visions that I've had and how now they're sort of coming together and how I'm understanding this and how this is propelling me into this venture. That's probably enough right now. I mean, I've tapped on a couple of things that I really didn't delve into. You may have heard of them or may not have heard of them. But this will give you a sense. I'm going to put this video, my intention at this time is to put this video on my next couple of blogs. I may refine the video, but to put it in a section, who am I? Or who is Cindy White Dove Jordan, White Dove Sings Jordan? Um, 
I think it's important that you know who I am because I'm inviting you to work with me. I'm inviting you to catch the vision or to see if the vision resonates with you. If it does resonate with you, then by all means, get on board, come on board, and let's do this together. Okay, that's it for now. Peace and namaste.